Hey guys, look what came in today. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, today we have something pretty special for you. This is a Luger carbine, of course. It is a model 1906 backslash 1920. We'll talk a little bit about what that means. Um, but these carbines were uh, very popular in Germany in the 1900s. It was actually a very strong hunting culture at that time. A lot of, a lot of hunting areas and hunting clubs, hunting and fishing, but we'll focus on the hunting clubs. Back in the early 1900s, uh, the, the, actually there was a model 1902 carbine. Uh, the whole world was uh, taking a look at these kinds of uh, pistols slash carbines. So for example, the Borchardt came out, which was an interesting uh, carbine, made very few of them. Uh, but also then the broom handle, most of you know about the broom handle Mauser, and it came together uh, with a stock, that, a stock that acted as a holster, but then could be put together as a carbine. And then also Colt uh, in the United States. We know the earliest models of single action armies had availability for a carbine. Uh, function, but then also uh, like the 1905. I know I have a uh, 1905 with a stock that can be attached, uh, turning it into a carbine. But uh, this was probably one of the most popular carbines in the world. The, the first model was in 1902. The biggest difference was in the toggle. There was some subtle differences and they were very well made, but the 1902 ca uh, carbine what you'll notice is this toggle piece right here, here's a picture of one, it had a dish toggle. It was just an earlier variation. That was the 1902 carbine. Those sell for a little bit more money because they were extremely well made and they were made from scratch. Now, I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that, but extremely well made, made from scratch. And uh, the world was a different place in 1902 all the way up to 1914. Um, they were selling these. They went out as gifts to people. We know heads of state that had them. Sometimes uh, they would be carried in a suitcase. Uh, sometimes they would have a leather pouch like this, but you would give them um, as gifts uh, to hunting buddies or, as I said, like uh, there are different heads of state that would buy these. And uh, they were quite expensive at the time, but uh, there was a market for them up until World War I. Then, as you can imagine, uh, all uh, production uh, went away from doing commercial guns. Uh, certainly, they didn't have time for guns like this, beautiful guns like this. They didn't have time for it. And everything went into Navy slash military uh, pistols for the German Army. Then, when the war ended, again, the world had changed uh, in that uh, the German economy was decimated. Uh, the DWM, this is DWM, made by DWM, that factory was just struggling to stay in business. They lost all their military contracts. In fact, they were banned from making any more Lugers for the military, uh, very limited uh, for the police, but they were banned from, from making any uh, uh, weapons for the military. So they were looking for a commercial market and they said, well, let's try to bring back the 1902 carbine, but this time it would be a 1920. Uh, the reason being they, re they retooled uh, to make more Lugers in the 1920s. It doesn't mean that the year it was made was 1920, but it was in the 20s. The model 1920 carbine uh, looks uh, a lot like this. Now I'll show you what makes this a little bit different, a little more rare. 1920 carbine, um, they're, they're very well made, but they did use leftover parts. So what that happened was, uh, like for example, this barrel uh, would have to be made from scratch because they didn't have these. This is actually a 12 inch uh, barrel. Uh, they didn't have 12 inch barrels uh, laying around the factory. And of course this fore end or hand guard, th this uh, would have been made from scratch. Uh, and then this uh, butt stock had to be made from scratch. But a lot of the gun, the frame, the toggle, and all the small parts, they could use leftover parts from World War I. And they would put these together to make carbines. And where would they sell them? Well, they sold them mostly outside of Germany because by the 1930s, the whole world was in a, a deep depression and no place worse than uh, Germany. So they really didn't have a market for these. But again, DWM is putting together uh, anything they can sell on the commercial market, including these model 1920 carbines. Many of them went to the United States. Uh, that was a strong market for them. Uh, however, I don't believe this one did because the ones that went to the United States had to be marked made in Germany. Uh, the United States required an export mark. It's not an import mark. 
It's an export mark from the um, country of origin. So most of the 1920 carbines you'll see, see somewhere, usually on the rail here, um, sometimes uh, on the rail here, you'll see made in Germany. Uh, this one is not so marked. So I believe it could have been sold within Germany or it could have gone to Switzerland or one of the other European uh, nations. Now, let's take a closer look and find out, uh, first of all, how this uh, comes together and also what makes this a special model. Okay, the first thing I want to do before I go into some details on this, let's just look at how beautiful this is. Th that's the uh, buttstock, of course, uh, and you can see how the wood is just absolutely gorgeous. You can see the checkering. This wood matches this wood more than this wood. So basically, the Luger grips were made separately from the stock. They already had the Luger grips in stock. Uh, but when they wanted to put one of these together, they needed the extended barrel uh, along with the special sight. Uh, but they also had to be, build these, and these two match, but this not so much. Uh, we'll show you in a minute that, that it matches. It's, it's numbered to match as well. You can see the finish. It's a high polished blue. Um, and you can see the straw, uh, small parts. The screw was a fire blue. Uh, we'll turn this over to the other side. Again, you can see fire blue here, straw parts, and the beautiful bluing uh, um, and all the way down to the end of the barrel, a little bit of wear on the muzzle. Now, whenever I do this, the camera takes a look at this and says, uh, I, that's a 30 caliber. Just note that uh, commercial guns often were 30 caliber and the carbines were most often 30 caliber. Uh, but the military guns were 9mm, and the reason I want to call this out is I always get comments from the safety experts that say, look at him, he's pointing the gun right into the face of the cameraman. We actually can hold the camera, for all you Karens out there, we can hold the camera where we can see down here without putting our face in front of the bullet. Uh, obviously, we did check this ahead of time to make sure it's not loaded. Now, this, let's take this down a little bit and uh, see a little bit more detail. Most of you will never have a chance to handle one. By the way, there was a uh, uh, sling, optional. Uh, well, I, I think it was issued with a sling, but uh, oftentimes the, the, the slings are not still with the... In fact, I don't think I've ever seen one with a, a sling other than on the Internet. But I'm going to take this apart because, as I mentioned, most of you will never have a chance to see how this works. Uh, if you collect Lugers, you know that most Lugers have this, this the uh, stock lug, and and yet 99% of Lugers never had a stock on it. I thought it was in, I think it's interesting. They always put the stock lug on there all through World War II, and yet they never really issued them with the actual stock. So Navy Lugers uh, in World War One had a stock. Uh, there are a few other examples that would have a stock, but ge generally commercial guns. And basically, it's slotted. You see the little notch here. Uh, because it uh, slides right on, and then when you push this up, that notch, it, it holds it in place so it doesn't wiggle, and, um, and then you can just see how it, how it fits uh, nicely against my shoulder, and uh, it, just, it just has a, a really nice feel to it. Again, 30 caliber, so it's not going to have a lot of kick. And we'll pop this off again, and I'll show you that this is numbered to the gun. Uh, we'll see the magic number is 31. It's just the last two digits. So 31 is uh, numbered to the gun. So similar to the early Colts, there's a like a wedge, um, and all you have to do is push this through. I use my fingernail, and it pops out the other side. And that, that does have a keeper, so it doesn't get lost. I love that feature because I know I would set this aside and then not be able to find it. And then all you do is pop this off. comes off pretty easily. And down inside there, you can barely see it. I'm going to shine my light, but it does have the four-digit uh, number, which is 3231. So again, they, they usually on all the parts will just put the 31. I don't know if it's on the wedge. I don't see it on there. Uh, but they do uh, Colt, <laughs> the Colt Single Action Army, they would number the wedge. That's why I looked. Uh, but so you see 3231, so this is matching to the rest of the gun. And you can see the sl sling swivel right here. Now, the full serial number, it, you know, like when I'm logging this in for ATF, this is the full serial number, 3231, and it does have a T suffix for Tom. Uh, 31 under the takedown lever, 31 
under the, well, well, we'll take it apart. So from here on, it comes apart just like a standard Luger. Other than it being, having a big, long barrel, uh, some people are envious, uh, this one came with a big, long barrel, and it does have a special uh, 100 meter, 200 meter, 300 meter uh, adjustable rear sight. It has a fairly standard front sight, but the uh, rear sight is adjustable, just pushing that button. Uh, first, I'll take the uh, magazine out, and this is one distressing factor. I hate to, uh, I don't think I'm messing with history by saying this is not original to the gun. I have a better magazine, so before I sell this, I'm gonna put in a beautiful uh, nickeled magazine. Um, and the bottom, the ones that came to the United States are marked Germany, this is blank. And my cameraman, Randy, just pointed out, um, it, it is serial numbered down here. I mentioned this serial number. It's also the barrel is serial numbered. But more importantly, remember I said that's marked Germany? Well, when we took the uh, handguard off, uh, it is marked Germany right here, which means this one did come to the United States probably between, well, certainly between the wars, probably back in the 1920s. You can also see a crown and proof right there. Uh, that's important. And a crown and proof right here, which just is a commercial firing proof. Now, let me get to uh, the part that makes this um, a little more interesting. Uh, see this grip safety. So the, when this acts as an additional safety, so you have this safety, safety's on, it won't fire. Um, take the safety off, it still won't accidentally fire um, unless you push this grip safety down. Now this, this feature, this toggle with this grip safety is called the model 1906. So the ones from 1920, all, most of them do not have that grip safety feature. And you can see there's even a cutout on, it's a special, um, the left grip panel, it has a special cutout for the grip safety. And so most of the 1920 uh, carbines that you see will not have this feature, but because this does, it just means it was made from leftover parts from before the war, a Model 1906 frame and toggle were used to make this carbine. So that's why this one in the introduction, I said this is a Luger carbine 1906, Model 1906 slash 1920. So you just got educated as to um, what makes this so special. Now, uh, quick takedown. All you need to do is push this back like with any Luger and then push down the takedown lever, then this, uh, the side plate comes off and it is numbered under here, number 31. This uh, sticks a little bit. I'll just let you know I, I, when I try to slide it off, it sticks a little bit. Uh, and that's just because it has dried grease on it. I have to get that. And there we go. You can see that the interior is, has, it's polished white. Uh, so the bluing and then they polish the white. And then this is the reinforcement for the extended barrel. And uh, there's the full barrel. And of course we can take the toggle off very easily. Uh, I hate to go through all this trouble, but since you guys paid a lot of money to watch this video, I'll pop the toggle off pretty easy. And uh, you can see here, there's another uh, crown end. There's a real light crown end. The firing pin is not numbered and it's not fluted just for you nerds out there who uh, actually know what I'm talking about. It's, it's non-fluted, which would be World War II, and it's not numbered. And finally, um, I'll check the bore. Oh my gosh. I don't know if Randy will get a shot of that. If we look down the bore, you can see that it's, it's just like a mirror bore, hardly ever shot. So this, this gun truly is in pristine condition. Okay, now you know as much as I do about the uh, Luger carbine, especially a very rare variation, the model 06-20, 1920. Uh, the last thing is the leather case. Now, this is pretty interesting because well, it's a repro. Um, I don't, I really haven't even seen an original. I do see them come in suitcases, uh, but this is made a very fine craftsmanship, very soft leather, very well made. Um, but uh, I recognize this logo. I know the leather maker, master craftsman. I didn't get his permission to give his name out. I don't think he's making them anymore. I think he's made a very limited supply, uh, but these, these are incredible. And I'll show you how this gets stored. So I just popped the stock off and this slides right in, protects it, uh, love the leather on the fine wood. And then the rest of the gun toggle down, pops on here, pops in here.
and then you latch it you latch it together and you've got yourself this little suitcase it just absolutely gorgeous and somebody out there is going to want this um, by the way it does have room for an extended cleaning rod I have not seen a cleaning rod for one of these guns but I'm sure they're out there and this would be storage for the cleaning rod as well hey that was fun uh, at least for me, I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel because if you look at our subscriptions, we are approaching 100,000, which is really exciting for me. We've, uh, we've really been pushing lately and help, hopefully you guys can help push us over the edge. So uh, send this off to somebody else who you think might be interested.